welcome back to the Google Workspace Update podcast from Strawberry 7. My name is Adam. And my name is Adam. We're here to bring you the latest updates about everything that's happening around Google Workspace. This podcast is available in audio form from your normal podcast provider and also in video form on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7. Let's get to it. On with the show. So I understand that this week we have a lot of updates, Adam. Is that is that right? Yes, we do. There's quite a few things to, um, to get through this week. So um, let's jump straight in. Right. So the very first update that we've got is to do with Google Calendar. So Google Workspace client-side encryption beta has been expanded to include Google Calendar. So back in 2021, Google announced Workspace client-side encryption to help customers strengthen the confidentiality of their data while helping to address the broad range of data sovereignty and compliance requirements. So since then, Google has made this feature available for Google Meet, Drive, Docs, Sheets, and Slides, with support for multiple file types, including Office files, PDFs, and more. So uh, today, uh, Google announced the beta for client-side encryption for Google Calendar. So when using client-side encryption for calendar events, your event description, announcements and meet data is indecipherable to Google servers. So you have uh, control over encryption keys and the identity service uh, to access those keys. Okay, so that's uh, that's a useful feature, I think, especially for like enterprise sort of level where they maybe have a requirement to maintain that confidentiality and that encryption layer within some kind of maybe GDPR policy that they've got or some kind of privacy policy that that they've got there. Um, And also, I think it's important as well for people who use Google Calendar for maybe very sensitive individuals, you know, VIPs or people who who it can't be known where they are. um, And it's sensitive in that in that regard. It's just another layer of security and encryption there that even Google can't access that data. Yes, absolutely. So, for example, maybe you're, um, you've arranged a, a calendar event with something, maybe it's to do with HR, maybe it's just a private meeting, but then you're attaching a doc, some documents or a, a Google Doc or um, a, a, any, anything really to that Google meeting that is essentially private to w- within the people within the meeting. So it's just nice to know that that is all now uh, encrypted. So Google and nobody else will be able to see um, y- your own personal data. Yeah, that's um, that's fantastic. I, th- I think it would be really useful to somebody, an institution like the NHS or something like that. I'm always being surprised if anyone from the NHS is listening, you know, who's in um, who's who's sort of high up in IT. I I've always been very surprised that the NHS doesn't make more use of Google Workspace. And I think there are these concerns about security and confidentiality and encryption. And this is kind of another string to that bow if you like of uh, of encryption great and when's who's that going to be available to adam and when's that going to be available so this is going to be available to google workspace google workspace google workspace enterprise plus education plus education standard customers uh, is not going to be available to google workspace essentials business starter business standard business plus Enterprise Essentials, Education Fundamentals, Frontline and Nonprofits, as well as Legacy, G Suite, Basic and Business customers. It's also not going to be available to um, to users with a personal Google account. Uh, I don't think they actually said specifically when this is available. So I think it may just be available now. Yeah, sure. That makes a lot of sense that it's more enterprise level because um, it's more of an enterprise requirement. And it's interesting that it's in the education sphere as well, because, again, I can imagine education making use of that. Okay, great, Adam. What's the um, what's the next update? Right. Next up, uh, this is to do with Google Chat and Gmail. So improving the Google Chat and Gmail search experience on web and mobile. I think this should be very helpful to everybody. So in order to help you finds more accurate and customized search suggestions and results, Google are introducing three features that will improve Google Chat and Gmail search experience on web and mobile. So these three features are, first up, we've got 
search suggestions. So search query suggestions based on your past search history in chat will now appear as you type in the chat search bar. This will help you quickly recall important messages, files, and more on mobile. I know I actually use that feature quite a bit myself. Um, uh, when Adam and I, when we've spoken on Google Chat, I know sometimes I think to myself, oh, I, I know we discussed this uh, a couple of days ago or whatever. So then I search where to try and re recall that information. So I know that I'm going to be using that one. Uh, next uh, one is Gmail labels. You can now search messages under a specific Gmail label in the app to return results only within that label. You can also uh, also use search chips in the Gmail search bar to refine uh, label searches. So I think that should be quite helpful as well. And finally, the third one, uh, related results. For Gmail search queries that return no results, related results will be shown to improve the overall search experience. Oh, okay. That last one is um, is particularly useful because uh, I can I've done it a few times where I've searched and there's been no results, but I have been after something kind of similar. So I imagine that is going to be sort of like when you type something into Google and it also it sort of says, "Did you mean this?" and suggests something else, and then you obviously, like you said, you've got those search search suggestions there. It's interesting that you couldn't search for labels on. Uh, within the app I didn't actually know that I thought you I've never really used it very much myself but I thought you could search within labels but I do that a lot on the web so I know it'd be very useful for people to have that on their mobile device as well um who's that available for and how are we looking at rolling that out Adam okay so this is going to be available to all Google Workspace customers as well as legacy G Suite basic and business customer, customers. Uh, it's also available to users with a personal Google account. So right across the board, available to everybody. So the rollout for the search suggestions, uh, this feature is now available on Android devices. So that's already available, which is great. Uh, rollout to iOS devices will uh, should be complete by the end of October. The Gmail labels uh, is uh, already available on Android and iOS. And the related uh, results feature is now available on the web too. So it's basically, it's just the search suggestions that we're waiting to become available. And the, the other three are already out there, which is cool. Great, lovely. Okay, thanks for that, Adam. What have we got next? Right, next up, uh, this is uh, it's an area I've not really looked into actually, it's uh, Google Marketplace. So you can now easily find Google Workspace Marketplace apps uh, with enhanced search features. So it's a little bit similar to um, what we were just saying about the uh, enhanced search within Gmail. They're now um, doing some enhanced search within the marketplace. So Google are introducing enhanced search features in the Google Workspace marketplace to help you quickly find relevant apps. These new filters uh, allow you to search by category, price, rating, whether it's a private app for the organization or if it works with other apps and more. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, I can imagine that being handy when you're looking, there's a lot of apps, there's a lot of apps in the Google Marketplace, so I can imagine being able to filter those different areas is quite useful. Uh, the it, I have used Google Marketplace a bit internally, sort of within Workspace, to deploy apps, uh, mainly for WAND and things like that, cross-educational institutions. So I haven't particularly found that I haven't been able to find the app that I've been looking for personally, but I can imagine that if people are looking for something quite specific, having those extra fe extra search features would be really useful. Um, when's that going to roll out and who's that available to? So the rapid release and scheduled release is going to be starting on October the 20th, and this is going to be available to Google Workspace Business Starter, Business Standard, Business Plus, Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus, Education Fundamentals, Education Plus, and Nonprofits, as well as Legacy G Suite Basic and Business Customers. This is not available to Google Workspace Essentials, Enterprise Essentials, and Frontline Customers, uh, but it will be available to users with a personal Google account. Okay, so a bit of an interesting mix of uh, of, of release uh, who that's available to, but um, I'm sure Google have their reasons for uh, for that. What's next, Adam? 
another very handy update. So uh, this is to do with Google Slides and Google Meet. So you can now present Google Slides directly into Google Meet, which I think will be a, a very helpful feature to, um, I, I just think it'll be a very helpful feature. So many Google Meet users share content on their screen during uh, meetings, uh, and we know it's important for presenters to actively interact with their audience. You'll now be able to control your slides and engage with your audience all in one screen by presenting slides uh, directly from your Google Meet. So this updated experience can help you present with greater confidence and ultimately make digital interactions uh, feel more like when you're physically together. Yeah. Okay. That's really interesting because the I, I can imagine that being very useful where you're not having to share your screen and instead you've kind of got it embedded directly within the within the meeting and you can control it that way. It's another it's another example of how because Google have all of these different things linked together, they all just work so well together. Whereas if you've got you know, not to draw direct comparisons, but if you've got something like Zoom or something, uh, you know, another Microsoft Teams or whatever, then there's not necessarily that direct interaction between the uh, between the products. So that's another example of how they're kind of joining everything up together. How do you actually do that, Adam? How do you how do you physically do that to present that? So within Google Meet, uh, it, it, it's in a very similar way to how you would, <clears throat> excuse me, how you would uh, present your screen. Um, within the Google Meets, but instead you can select uh, present a tab in the Google Meets, then you'd uh, choose a Google slide presentation, and then you can manage your presentation with controls at the bottom of the corner of the presentation. So I, I know that this is going to be very helpful. Um, before, previously, um, I have presented a Google slide presentation within a Meet, and I know because I had notes on specific slides and at different points, I was kind of thinking to myself, well, what, what can the other person see? Do they see all my notes? Do they just see the presentation as I, as I want them to see it? So I, I definitely think being able to just present directly into the Google Meet will, be, um, will, def will definitely be very handy. Yeah, okay. That's, um, yeah, I understand. So basically then people look for the sort of symbol, which is the square with the up arrow, which is the normal symbol for presenting their window or their screen. They'd click that, they click present a tab, which is the option that's already there, but they would then select a slide presentation and Google Meet will kind of almost detect that that's a Google slide. Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry. So you, you so you'd already have your Google slides um, open in a, um, in a in a different tab uh, within yep. your browser. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And when's that going to be available and who's that going to be available for? So rapid release and scheduled release is starting on October the 20th and this is going to be available to Google Workspace Business Standard, Business Plus, uh, enterprise Essentials, enter Enterprise Standard, Education Standard, Enterprise Plus, Education Plus, Teaching and Learning Upgrade and Non-Profit Customers. This is not going to be available to Google Workspace Essentials, Business Starter, Education Fundamentals, uh, Frontline, as well as Legacy G Suite Basic and Business Customers. And it is also not available to users with a personal Google account. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of in line with um, the meet the meet record features and various things like that. So yeah, that's great. What's next, Adam? So next up, uh, this is all to do with Google Chat. So conversation summaries in Google Chat can help you stay on top of messages in Spaces. So they're having a, a bit of a rejig for Google Chat. So back in May. Uh, bleh, start that again. Back in May, Google introduced conversation summaries in Google Chat on web. Summaries provide a helpful digest of conversations in a space, allowing you to quickly catch up on unread messages and navigate to the most relevant threads. So, and this is why Google thinks it's important. So throughout the course of the workday, we often find ourselves switching between virtual meetings, emails and chat threads. I, I, I know we do that quite a lot ourselves. Uh, with conversation summaries, you can easily stay on top of the latest conversations. Oh, okay. I, I can't imagine that this is something that we would particularly notice um, because we're quite a small team. But I imagine if you've got, 
if you work in a company with you know 200 of you or something like that and even if 20 or 30 of you are in a uh, chat thread then I can imagine that getting a little bit um, difficult to navigate around when there's a lot of messages so I I can definitely see how those conversation summaries are really going to help with people just being able to glance into those spaces and <clears throat> just to be clear for any listeners who aren't familiar what Google means when they say spaces in Google chat is the easiest way of thinking about that is groups, isn't it, Adam? It's like a WhatsApp group, yeah. really, isn't it? Uh, so it's just a group of you in a particular what they call space, and then you can all message in there. So I think what they're saying here is that you're when you go into that chat area, that space, you're going to see this sort of new summary view that's going to allow you to go to those areas quickly like i said not something that i can imagine we would particularly use as a small team but a bigger a bigger company is part of a bigger team or especially in education as well where there's a lot of messages flying around google chat if they use that that's really um that's be really handy and when's that available and who's that available for adam uh, so this is going to be available to google workspace essentials business standard uh, business plus enterprise essentials enterprise standard enterprise plus education plus education standard and the teaching and learning upgrade frontline and non-profit customers this is not going to be available to google workspace business starter education fundamentals and legacy g suite basic and business customers this is also not going to be available to users with a personal google account and rapid release is starting on october the 19th and scheduled release is starting on november the 2nd great okay and, and again just for our listeners in case you're not familiar rapid release refers to effectively beta it's not actually beta but think of it as beta it's just early release and you're getting it a little bit early but there may be some initial bugs in there and then scheduled release is uh, is the general release out to everybody and I think those releases are in line with who would use those features as well because again it's kind of those slightly bigger companies slightly bigger institutions who are going to uh, have those higher number of, uh, of users okay and then I think we've got another Google chat um, update Adam and this one looks this one looks huge but so I'll let you uh, take take that Yes. So next up, so you can now hold separate conversations in Google chat spaces with uh, a new feature that they're calling inline threading. So uh, in addition to recently increasing the number of members, you can add to a space in Google chat from 400 to 8,000. Imagine having 8,000 people in one <laughs> Google chat. That sounds chaotic at best but uh, you yeah, can I'm now <laughs> you can now reply directly to any message in in new spaces and some existing spaces this creates a separate inline thread where smaller groups of people can continue a conversation on a separate topic so i, I do think this is going to be quite helpful um but let me just carry on with this so uh, you can find and navigate to the threads you're following or where you're specifically mentioned with a new thread panel on the right hand side of a conversation visual indicators such as a badge for the number of replies direct app mentions and when a message is deleted within a thread will help you stay on top of the latest activity in any given thread and Here's why Google think you'd use it. So with inline threading, you can reply to a specific message in a space. This can be useful in scenarios such as uh, answering questions in line with replies while not disrupting the flow of the main space. Uh, starting a breakout discussion for topics that may not be of interest to everybody. Uh, by default, replying in line will notify the original poster and those who have either been at mentioned or replied in the thread. Other users will have the ability to subscribe to the chain by opening the inline replies and selecting follow. So then you have to um, manually say, I want to stay uh, informed with, with this conversation, essentially. Uh, replying to an older message when the main discussion has moved on to a different topic, Google hopes that by incorporating inline threading into spaces will also be easier and more intuitive for users to scan the space and know what's going on. It will also help reduce uh, noise for many users as they will only be notified for 
replies to threads they participated in or choose to follow. Google is also making improvements to navigating the space with a new uh, thread navigation panel. You can browse through all the threads in the space and you can also filter for only threads you're following or when you're specifically mentioned. Wow, okay. Um, and there's some additional details there as well, isn't there? As if that wasn't enough to uh, unpack, but yeah, yes, give so, us the uh, additional details. Bear with us. So in inline threading functionality will depend on which type of space you're using. So inline threading will be available in existing spaces where there is a single stream of unthreaded messages, previously known as unthreaded spaces existing spaces with messages and replies groups together for everyone in the main chat window are were sorry previously known as threaded spaces and will now be referred to as spaces organized by conversation topic these spaces will not have an inline will not have inline threading and cannot be reconfigured you can identify which type of space you are in by the location of the compose box. Inline threaded spaces have a single compose box at the bottom of the space. Spaces organized by topic instead have a plus new topic button at the bottom of the space, while each topic has its own compose box. Right. Okay, so there's right. There's a lot to um, a lot to unpack there, um, but we don't want to sort of focus on this too much because there are so many updates this week. Uh, I think, in summary, this is basically saying it's making these larger spaces or groups easier to handle and easier to easier for people to talk to about the individual part that they're talking about or the individual bit that's come up. So the closest thing I can think of, because I've noticed that you can't do this in Google Chat at the moment, so maybe this is breaking into this area. In WhatsApp or iMessage or anything like that, you can, especially in a group, you can reply to a specific message and you can't actually do that in Google Chat or you haven't been able to do that in Google Chat. So from what I'm reading here, it's kind of along those lines where you're going to be able to do that type of thing is reply to a specific message. So say it was you, me, Gary, and we were talking together in a space, I would be able to go back to a message that you had said specifically where you were talking about something that maybe just we were working on that had come up in conversation. I'd be able to reply to that directly and maybe even take that off on a different thread. I think I've kind of got that along the right lines. Yes, that's right. So then within the Google chat, you'd then be able to see, oh, uh, th this message had a handful of replies to it. You could then um, click to expand those replies, but it would open as a panel on the right hand side, where it's almost a new chat space where uh, you just be able to c continue that conversation, essentially, to all being replied to the original message, if that makes mm. sense. So yeah, okay. th there were a few things in there. So um if you've already um, created lots of new topics within your Google Chat, then you cannot change that. But this will uh, be the default for brand new spaces that have been um, th th that get created. And mm. I think they said that the easiest way to identify which type you're in is. Yes, yeah, whether it's got the compose box or the plus new topic at the bottom, yes. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's I saw that as well. I thought I thought okay, that's quite an easy way to tell where you are is whether you've got that single compose box at the bottom or the plus new topic um, at the bottom. Okay, great. And when's that going to be available, and who's that going to be available to? Looks like it's available to pretty much everybody. So this is available to all Google Workspace customers as well as legacy G Suite Basic and business customers. It's also available to users with a personal Google account. So right across the board, available to everybody, great. Uh, rapid release and scheduled release is starting on October the 17th. Great, okay, no problem. So that's gonna be, uh, yeah, I think that was a few days ago, so that's <coughs> uh, that's pretty much out. Okay, so on to the next update then, please, Adam. Right, next update. So you can, they're now, um, updates to storage management tools are, are becoming available in the Google Admin Console. So in April 2022, Google announced a new set of tools for managing storage across your organization. 
these tools give customers additional insights and controls to manage storage usage across users, groups, or their entire organization. To further enhance this experience, Google are rolling out a, a new storage admin role, the ability to apply storage limits to shared drives, and a new column called Shared Drive ID in the Manage Shared Drives page. And here's why Google thinks it's important. So super admins can now use the storage admin role to delegate uh, access to the storage management tools, which will allow these admins to view and manage their storage usage. The new storage admin role will be rolling out over the next several days. As an admin, you can delegate a new storage admin in the admin console. In the coming months, admins will be able to apply a storage limit policy to shared drives within a company or an organizational unit. Uh, this new functionality will further help admins configure the managed storage settings that best fits the needs of their organization. In addition, admins will be able to uniquely identify a shared drive using the shared drive ID. Google will provide an update when this functionality becomes available. Okay, I I got I must admit I got a bit excited when I saw that there was this new share uh, storage admin sort of tools. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed by what's actually been uh, <laughs> been delivered in this update. I must admit, um, I I think having a storage admin role is possibly useful for certain organizations again i th i will be totally honest i think google are sometimes a bit pie in the sky thinking that in a school for example anybody is going to have the time or the technical knowledge to be able to go have a storage admin role maybe in secondary schools colleges universities yeah absolutely where you've got a dedicated it team and things like that um but certainly for most of our uh, schools. I don't think that anybody is going to have the time to be able to keep on top of that storage, uh, sort of those storage limits and quotas. It will fall to us and we're quite rightly and we're super admins anyway. The other thing is imposing limits on shared drives. I just wonder kind of how useful that's going to be because Google give so much storage anyway Again, I suppose in larger organisations where you've got that pooled storage or if you just want to be on the safe side in like a secondary school or something, I guess it might be quite useful. What I was hoping to see here, and for anybody from Google listening, is it would be great if Google would, would introduce some storage administration reports that were very useful tied in with security. So, for example, what I would like to see... At, whether it's within Strawberry 7 or within one of our education customers, is I would like to be able to go into the report area and say, show me all of the folders and files which are shared externally. Or show me all the files and folders which are shared, which are set so that anybody with the link can view, anybody with the link can edit. Maybe that exists in um, Google admin console already and maybe i've just missed it if it does please let us know please drop it in the comments or please email info at strawberry7.com we'd love to hear about uh, about where that is but i'm quite surprised that google haven't sort of introduced something like that because being able to see at a glance all of your stuff that you've got shared externally or you've because you know what it's like you go in and at the time you go okay i'll just change it so anyone with the link can edit it i'll change it back later but you sometimes forget or as and you and if we do that you know if we're doing things like that within strawberry 7 then obviously users might do things like that as well and i'm surprised that google hasn't introduced something like that but i guess if you ha like i said if you've got that bigger team or you've got some dedicated people, I guess this role might come in quite handy and the limitations might come in quite handy if you want to control that pooled storage that you've got as well. When is that going to be available and who's that going to be available to, Adam? So the rollout pace of the, the storage admin role, uh, rapid release and scheduled release for that is beginning on October the 18th. Uh, the adding shared drive storage limits and shared drive ID uh, that uh, Google will share an update once that feature becomes available. So it's not available just yet. 
Um, and this is going to be available to all Google Workspace customers, as well as legacy G Suite basic and business customers. Great, great. Thank you, Adam. And uh, what have we got next? Right, next up, uh, this is to do with Google Docs. So you can now split table cells in Google Docs to better organize information. I actually thought this oh, feature was hurrah. already available. <laughs> um, maybe I was no. I'm just thinking of something else. Um, yeah. But, but yes, it seems um, quite a, a, a simple feature, essentially, yep. but it will definitely be very helpful. Um, so uh, you can now split table cells in a desired number of rows and columns in Google Docs. For example, you can create uh, subheading cells by splitting the cell under a headed cell into two columns. Google hopes this highly requested feature improves upon your ability to organize information within uh, within tables in docs. So it, it's quite simple uh, if you wanted to split your cell. So to split cells, open a doc, right click into the cell, click split cells, enter the number of columns and rows that you want and click split. Oh, nice and easy. Brilliant. Yeah, I agree with you, Adam. This is a feature which has been lacking in Google Docs for quite a while. And I've, I've had it requested by clients a few times and they've been surprised as I have been as you have been about the fact that this isn't available but it's fantastic that it's available now so it's good to see that Google is starting to introduce some more user requested and user end features rather than just the sort of high level stuff in the in the background um, when's that going to be available and I think it's available to everybody so uh, available to all Google Workspace customers, as well as Legacy G Suite Basic and Business customers. It's also available to users with a personal Google account. And a uh, rapid release for this was starting on October the 17th, and scheduled release is starting on October the 31st. Great, brilliant. Um, what have we got next, Adam? Right, next up, Google Drive. Uh, Preview or download client-side encrypted files with Google Drive on Android and iOS. So admins for select Google Workspace editions can update their client-side encryption configurations to include Drive, Android, and iOS. So when enabled, users can preview or download client-side encrypted files. This feature is available for file, file types supported by Google Drive including Microsoft Office and PDF files. However, G uh, Google Docs, Sheets and Slides are not yet supported. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I know, right? Um, so support for uh, Google identity on Drive Android and Drive iOS will be introduced in a future release. Okay, okay. So again, this is probably quite useful for those enterprise level clients where they've got their own sort of encrypted files. And I think this is sort of a, possibly addressing one of the issues with bring your own device and that sort of blend that we have where we've got those own device used or mobile devices used within an environment, but you still want to maintain that security and that encryption and that control over your data and over things within a within a corporate environment or an education environment um okay and when's that going to be available and who's that going to be available to adam okay so a rapid and scheduled release is starting on october the 17th and uh this so the, for the for admins the configure client side encryption for google drive Android and iOS is available to Google Workspace, Workspace Enterprise Plus, Education Standard and Education Plus customers for end users preview or download client side encrypted files with Google Drive, Android and iOS is going to be available to all Google Workspace customers as well as legacy, legacy G Suite basic and business customers. Ah, right. OK, so that kind of almost completely supports what I was thinking then because you've got the where you can actually enable it is only available to very high-end subscriptions enterprise plus education standards and education plus those are very they've expanded it a little bit in education where they've done education standards which makes sense because education may want to encrypt the files or may have encrypted files uh, by standard but then the end user is basically anybody so that makes a lot of sense where it's the high level institutions who would want to enable it and have the feature 
but then it's catering almost to bring your own device or everybody that they're able to make those files available to. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Adam. Um, what have we got up next? Up next, uh, Google Slides and Drawing. So this sounds like it's going to be a quality of life uh, feature update. So enhanced menus in Google Slides and Drawings improves findability of key features. So Google is updating the menus in Google Slides and Google Drawings to make it easier to lo locate the commonly used features. In this update, you'll notice uh, shortened menus for better navigation, reorganization for more intuitive feature location and prominent icons for faster recognition. So this new design feature, this new design improves findability of key features, making it quicker and easier to use slides and drawings. Oh, lovely. Yeah, you're quite right then. Just a little quality of life um, improvement makes it a little bit easier to use. That should be nice for our education clients, especially if they want to use Google Drawings with the uh, with the children. That's, uh, that's lovely. And when's that available and who's that available to? So uh, rapid release is starting on October the 17th and scheduled release is starting on October the 31st. This is going to be available to all Google Workspace customers as well as legacy G Suite basic and business customers. It is also available to users with a personal Google account. So right across the board, available to everybody. Oh, brilliant. Uh, thank you, Adam. And what is the next update? Right, next update, uh, Google Calendar. So encouraging working location coverage across organizations. So admins, can, admins now have access to a new tool that aims to drive working location usage across their organization. So this setting adds a customizable banner to users calendar, either encouraging or requiring them to set their working location by increasing the usage of working location, admins and colleagues will have better context for location planning, meeting room management, preparing meetings for virtual and in-room attendees, and more. So this feature furthers Google's efforts to enable better planning around in-person collaboration in meetings and event coordination, especially in a hybrid working environment. So additionally, the banner will encourage users to take advantage uh, of the many enhancements to working location capabilities over the last months, such as better location context for events and RSVPs in calendar, uh, office building support for working locations, working location enabled by default, and improved user interface for sharing your working location in Google Calendar. Okay. Uh, I. I think that this working location feature for hybrid working is very good. Uh, I hope that Google aren't going to push this too much. I always clear this off of my calendar because for me personally, I never really know always where I'm going to be. That's the thing. I, I don't always know in advance where I'm going to be. And I know you can set it at the time, but I don't really have time to be constantly sort of changing my location in my calendar all the time. And to be honest, it's not really actually that relevant for what we do anyway. I mean, I can't, I, we haven't really been in a situation, because again, we're just not big enough. We haven't been in a situation where I've gone, well, Adam, before I set this meeting with you, I need to know whether you're going to be in a building or whether you're going to be at home or whether you're going to be on the road or whatever. It just isn't relevant relevant for, for us. So I think that it's a good feature for certain clients. I just hope that Google aren't going to push this too much in, in your face to constantly be saying you've got to update your location, you've got to update your location um, and, and sort of doing it, doing it that way. Uh, I think there's a bit next about how that can be customised maybe, Adam? Yes. So uh, by, by default, uh, this feature will be off, uh, but it can be enabled in the Google Admin Console by navigating to uh, Menu, Apps, Google Workspace, Calendar, Sharing Settings, Working Location, Banner, Section. So then you, you can turn that on for your organization if you want to, but, uh, but, but by default, it will be off. Uh, and a bit like you, maybe it's because of... Um, the, uh, the the way that we work uh, as, as a company, I kind of I'm not really seeing how helpful this feature would be for everybody. But uh, I, I'm sure there's some situations where potentially it would be helpful for them. But um, maybe if yeah. we were stuck in the same office every day or something, then it would just be really easy to 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 do this kind of once and then forget about it, and then it's just clear everybody knows where I am. Um, 
but yeah, but because we move around quite a lot, I, I don't think it will be especially helpful for, for us. But but maybe, um, but it, maybe it will be helpful for some others. I, th I think the key thing is we move around a lot, but we know we just know where we're going and where we're moving, and it's not relevant to the meetings that we're having. I, th I think that's where it's really and we communicate to each other. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we can say yeah. oh, we're going here this day, or we're, yeah. we're doing that that day. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're right in that it's relevant to those bigger organisations where you're maybe making a meeting with somebody who is in another department. You've maybe never even met them before or you know you know them vaguely and it saves if if everybody's keeping on top of it, it saves you having to contact that person and contact another person and another person and another person and find out where they're going to be that day. You can look on their Google Calendar and you'll know that they're in the office or they're here. And if you're making a meeting with, let's say, five people and you can see that none of them are going to be in the office when you're making the meeting, then you know that you won't need to book a meeting room, for example. You can all do it just exclusively over Google Meet. Whereas if three of them are in the office, you can book a meeting room with the three of you and then the two will be remote. I think that that's where this feature is really handy and really useful like I say not something that we use because we don't even have an office or a meeting room <laughs> but I can see how there is that that use case there I think I've got that right with how that use case would would work yes so uh, these banners can also be customized to include a message or a, a link on the landing page and admins can determine how long they want the banners to appear for so if they choose not to use it they don't have to or if they just want it there all the time they can or if they just say leave it up for a couple of weeks or however long they decide then they can do that um, if they want to mm, okay that's interesting it says a link to a landing page i wonder what that is whether that's some kind of landing page that allows you to book resources or something like that but you can actually do that within google calendar so um mm, that's interesting when's that available and who's that going to be available to then adam so uh, rapid release is starting on October the 17th. Uh, scheduled release is starting on October the 31st. So this is going to be available to Google Workspace Business Plus, Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus, Education Fundamentals, Education Plus, Education Standard, and the Teaching and Learning Upgrade, as well as Legacy G Suite uh, Business customers. This is not going to be available to Google Workspace Essentials, Business Starter, Business Standard, Enterprise Essentials, Nonprofits, Frontline Customers, as well as Legacy G Suite Basic Customers. And this is also not going to be available to users with a personal Google account. Yeah, that makes, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Again, those sort of slightly bigger organizations who would probably make use of that. Um, interesting that it's not available on Business Standard though. Um, that's uh, that's a little bit surprising. But yeah, I can understand why Google have gone quite high end with that. Um, and we've got one more update, haven't we? Yes, yes. So uh, last update for this week. So uh, this is to do with Google Drive. So workspace admins are now notified when label editing is restricted by set rules. So in addition to a recent feature allowing admins to programmatically manage and apply drive labels using a new API functionality, uh, Google have added a new label manager UI feature uh, showing which rules a label is used with. So when labels are published, they're semantic meaning can be leveraged for the enforcement of rules such as a dlp policy based on the presence of a label labels are locked to prevent the possibility of breaking a, a related rule and to make it easier to use labels to enforce rules google has added warnings and feedback to the labels manager uh, user interface specifically a message identifying uh, and linking the labels to the exact rules will now appear in the label manager to ensure admins understand why label modification is disabled. Okay. Again, I can imagine this is for very big institutions where they're using this Google, where they're using this labeling feature in Google Drive to help them navigate around, I guess, and, and sort of group documents together or find documents when they easily search. And I can imagine having rules is going to be very, very useful for doing that because it's sort of like, I imagine it when you create a spreadsheet and if you create a column where people can free enter text, even if you know, even if the choices are for them to enter, say, three things, 
you know that sooner or later somebody's going to make a typo or somebody's going to put it slightly differently or not put a capital letter or something like that. Whereas if you do a drop down under the data validation and you just give them those three options in a drop down, there's almost no way that it can be anything but one of those three options. And then it makes it much uh, more determined and much more set so that when you're searching or when you're looking or when you're running a report or a filter or anything, you're getting the exact results. You're getting the correct information. So I can see how that would help with data loss prevention if the rules are set for the labels that when you're searching or when you're looking, you're definitely getting the right results. You're definitely getting all of the data and all of the information. Um, I've never actually used drive labels. Have you used them? No, I haven't. Um... Maybe it's something we could use a bit more. Um, but yeah, so for example, you could add a label to just highlight uh, which documents are confidential, for example, or, yeah. or, or, or something like that. There's, I'm sure there's a, a variety of labels that you could use or customize to, to your own needs for your own business or uh, for your own workspace, really. But yeah, it's not something that we've really used ourselves. Yeah, I, I can imagine that um, labels would be possibly quite handy for us with our SOPs and our knowledge base because we do organise that into folders, but we've got a section in our knowledge base and our SOPs where we've got applies to, haven't we? And that is sometimes multiple things. So, for example, in our internal SOPs within Strawberry 7, we'll have we might have SOPs and then we might have Microsoft and then we might have Office, for example, and we'll have some SOPs in there to do with Microsoft Office. But sometimes those SOPs will be about Microsoft Office, but they'll also be about email or they'll also be about um, Windows a little bit or something like that. So it would be quite handy with those labels to be able to apply some different categories to those to to facilitate that applies to label if you like um, and having those rules again I think I'm understanding this right having those rules that are set by the admin of what people can pick um, and if they violate those kind of giving them information about how they violated them is very useful who's that yes. available to and when so, is that going to be available Adam oh so I was just going to uh, quickly add on to that so lo label locking prevents uh, admins from inadvertently renaming, deleting, or disabling a label, which could result in a policy breakage. So that's quite handy. And uh, in order to use this, uh, drive labels must be turned on for your organization. So uh, the rollout for this rapid release and scheduled release is starting on October the 17th. And this is going to be available to Google Workspace Essentials, Business Standard, Business Plus, uh, Enterprise Essentials, Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus, Education Plus, Education Standard, uh, th but this is not going to be available to Business Starter, Education Fundamentals, the Teaching and Learning uh, Upgrade, Nonprofits and Frontline, as well as Legacy, G Suite Basic and Business Customers. This is also not going to be available to users with a personal Google account. Okay, yep, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. But, I mean, we'll be able to use this feature ourselves because we're on business standard. So we'll actually be able to um, turn this feature on and use it ourselves. So it might be something that we can um, that we can do. Well, first of all, on behalf of all of the listeners, Adam, a round of applause for getting through all of, uh, all of that. That was a huge, huge amount of updates and a huge amount of data. So very well done getting through all that. And well done to you, our listener, for sticking with us this long to um, get through all of the updates. Um, hopefully we haven't consumed your entire journey into work or, or out of work or wherever you're listening to this uh, to this podcast. Um, as Adam was saying to me earlier, obviously the length of our podcast is determined by the number of updates that we have. Sometimes there's a couple of updates and sometimes like this time there's about 12 or 50. How many updates were there, Adam? Do you actually know? Uh, I think I think we're on 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12. 12 updates yeah, this week. 12 updates, yeah. Wow. Okay, so yeah, huge amount of updates from um, from from Google. But well done sticking to the end. Hopefully that was um, that was all useful to you. Um, and that's it. That's everything that you need to know about the latest updates happening within Google Workspace. Remember that there is a video version of this podcast available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7. And there is an audio version available from your regular podcast provider. Thank you you so much for joining us this week we'll be back again next monday with more updates goodbye bye